pray just to help us out. Ah, very, very good. <clears throat> okay, so I claim now we have enough, we have just enough to see uh, that, in fact, uh, a countable set is not finite. Okay, this is not in the book, but I'm doing it for your edification. As you might wonder, theorem n is, or any countable set, is in fact infinite. Hmm, okay. How are we going to show this? How are we going to show this? How do you know, for instance, that Harris doesn't have a secret one-to-one -one correspondence of n with some finite set that I just don't know about, right? Maybe, maybe he's discovered something that no, none of us has discovered. How are you going to rule that out? Yes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, um, so uh, so your your idea is uh, to say that somehow for any natural number there's always a bigger one. Okay, well, um, what do you mean by that? They never stop. That I mean, how do you know? So it's certainly true with the cert the the ordering that I you know we we normally think of, like you write them in order one two three four five. That's a particular correspondence of the natural numbers with themselves, right? But how do you know there isn't a secret one that Harris has that no one else has that, in fact, associates to any number way over there some number over here? There's a question. Hmm. Okay, so it's a harder problem than you might initially think of, but, the, 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 uh, but we, can, we can see why it's true now. We have enough to see why it's true. And I claim um, you can see that maybe in this example here. So um, let's let me just sketch a proof. By sketch, I mean I'm not writing out all the details, but enough to to show you why um, uh, it should be uh, plausible. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to prove this, like all good things about the natural numbers, when we have no insight, we're going to prove it by induction. Okay. So um, here's a proof by induction. What am I going to induct on? What's n? Little n. What's little n? So I'll, I'll just tell the reader first. I'll say, well, do, do, we'll do it on little n uh, and show what? We'll show that n is not in one-to-one -one correspondence. There is no bijection between n and j sub little n. Would you be happy with that? OK. Uh, OK, we'll do a base case. and. Uh, if you like, uh, you could. Would you agree that it's clear? I won't write this down. It's clear that the natural numbers, there's no bijection between the empty set or even the set with one element and the natural numbers, right? If you had a one element set and the natural numbers, then this one thing gets associated with one other thing, which you can remove, and then there's a lot of stuff left over. It can't be onto. Would you agree with that? Okay, so no matter what function you pick, you can see what they all have to be. This one element, so I'll just do the base case here. I'll write out sketch. Base case, um, let's say uh, um, if uh, n is bijective with the set 1, so clearly n's, n's not empty. And if it's bijective with the set 1, then um, 
then, then what do I know about 1? It gets mapped to somewhere in n, doesn't it? Then um, consider uh, n. Now, whatever that function is that takes 1 uh, to something, no matter what it is, if you omit that, there's stuff left over. Then n, consider n minus uh, the, the inverse image of 1. OK, so I'm going to need to give this a name. Let's, let's, do, uh, let's draw a little arrow, bijective arrow. In fact, let me draw the, if you don't mind, I'll just draw the bijective arrow backwards. I'll call this function g. Then consider n minus g of 1. It's non-empty. So g is not onto. Or the other way to say it is, if you're looking at the forward function, uh, g could not be 1 to 1, because everything has to get mapped to 1. Right? Lots of ways to see that. OK, so what's the inductive step? Well, it goes something like this. I'm going to show you that if there were some secret bijection between n and a segment j sub n, then there would be another secret bijection between n and the segment with one less number in it. Okay? That would provide the inductive step, because that would show that if there were a bijection between uh, n minus 1, the n minus 1 segment and all of n, then there would be between that and n. So let me just, let me just say this. Uh, we'll show um, if j sub n, I'll say it a different way, is bijective with, um, with all of n, then j sub n plus 1 is bijective with all of n. OK, and how are we going to do that? Let's just sketch that a little bit here. We'll do it by contrapositive. We'll so if there were, if there were, let's say, uh, a bijection between j sub n plus 1 and n, and let's call this bijection, if you like, um, uh, let's call it h. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this backwards, sorry n j sub n plus 1, I'll call it h. This is a bijection. Then um, what, could I, what could I do with this? Here's the thing that I want you to notice. I claim I can now construct a bijection between n and j sub n. How will I do that? Well, what's j sub n plus 1? It's the numbers 1 through n and then n plus 1, right? So what's going to happen? Let's do the following. Here's the picture you, you might have in your head. Let's associate, then, in the following uh, way, this picture. So um, would you agree that under this bijection, n plus 1 gets associated with something over here? Yeah? OK. What does it get associated with uh, over here? Actually, I probably did want the, I did want the arrow to go the other way. Okay, let, me, let me draw it this way, because it's, it's the direction that I want. Would you agree that if there were a bijection like this, by removing one thing on both sides, I still have a bijection? So if there were a bijection between all of n to this, then there is a bijection between n minus the, 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 the set containing g, uh, h of n plus 1 with what? j sub n. Agreed? Yeah? Oh. Then this would be a bijection. Then there exists a bijection 